the heartbeats are starting to beat. This is race four of a 12 race season. Porsche Carrera Cup Benelux. We are going. It's a great start for Flint Sherry. He's been rubbing the hard off the line. The hearts had a bad start. Ben Van Parijs also coming up the inside. Dreadful start for Robert De Haan. It's Flick Schering, he wants to make up for yesterday's disappointment and he leads the field into turn one and turn two but Robert De Haan trying to come back around the outside taking the long way around. He hangs it right around the outside. Flick Schering slams the door in his face. It's Robert De Haan who's still into second place. Glenn Van Parijs almost mugged him as well. There's a lot of uh, fighting for position further back but look at this. Glenn Van Parijs, he knows he needs to get past Robert De Haan early on. Along the parabolic he gives him the squeeze into the heavy, under heavy braking, almost three abreast to hard to the inside, but Flick Schering has that line, or does he? Out of the hairpin they come, side by side, now who's it going to be? It's Flick Schering who gives way to Robert Dehaan, Dehaan into the lead of the race, now Schering coming under pressure from Glenn Van Parijs who is behind the first three and broken away from Sam De Jong and they suddenly go wide further back but we're keeping our eyes on the first three cars. A very competitive start into that first corner. A lot of positions to be gained and a lot of positions to be lost in the early stage. I think that's Micah Stanley who might be going slow at the back. We'll check that one in a bit. But our new race leader, Robert De Haan, he started on pole position, he lost it. And now he's taking it back again in the first lap. That opening lap is always crucial. It's a great opportunity to make up places. It's such a dangerous place though to lose places. So Robin De Haan out of turn 17 onto the pit straight. He's now opened up a bit of a gap between himself and Flint Schuring. And uh, across the line they come. Dirk uh, Schuten is uh, down into fourth place. So Glenn Van Parijs up into third. And uh, De Jonga, Sam De Jonga in the, the treble seven car now made it up to fourth place having relegated Dirk Schuette in a position. So, making a good progress, not the start of Dirk Schuette he wanted, you can see Bertrand Baguette in the background there, and there's Ariel Levy, he's got a lot of work to do from further back, running side by side with Aaron Mason in the number eight car. This is a 30 minute sprint race, 30 minutes plus one lap. And uh, we are already two and a half minutes into the race. We've had a lead change already, and it's Robert De Haan. Now Glenn Van Parijs to the inside of Flick Schering. He knows he needs to get after the race leader because the championship is critical. The top two in the championships have finished first, second, or third in every race so far. Podiums almost essential if you want to take this championship all the way to the wire. Finishing outside of the podium doesn't seem to be enough. That is how competitive Porsche Carrera Cup Benelux is. Lots of position fighting further back as we look at the field in the glorious sunshine. I'm going to take another look at the start here. And uh, there was one that got away very quickly and then stopped. And uh, that was car 912, Felipe Wills. And he has been given a time penalty a five second time penalty for making that start so a false start has been awarded to Felipe Bills and uh, that will be a time that will be added on to his time at the end of the race you sort of get going and then stop again I don't think he gained much from it but he certainly it was passed as a jump start taking a look just a little glimpse on the inside of Bertrand Baguette but here come the race leaders Robert De Haan is opened up a gap from Flint Schering Glenn Van Parijs looking more impatient than ever you can see that the black and white flag has been awarded to Ariel Levy for pushing another car off the track so uh, that would be the car 93 Jamie Font uh, the black and white flag it is a warning it doesn't mean the driver will be penalised necessarily, but it does mean that if the driver does something similar to that again during this race, he may well get a penalty. 
So, let's take stock. Robert Dehaan leading the way. It was a second ahead of Flint Schering last time around. But I think that will have opened up a bit and Glenn Van Parijs will be getting increasingly impatient because he knows that as long as he is behind Flint Schuring, he cannot get off to after his championship rival. Still a little bit too far back along the pin straight they come. Robert Dehaan, who was in open wheel racing very much up until this point, has taken to Porsche very much like the duck to water and that is Ralph Poplars doing a little bit of rally cross. He rejoins now. Whether he's damaged the car, well, we'll find out, I guess. Uh, the splitter is the bit that gets damaged very easily. You can see him tearing across the grass there. Definitely didn't even lift it off, did he? Get your foot buried on it, mate. That's what you do. Rejoins the track. And, uh, well, it's a brave man who keeps his foot on it on the grass at the best of times. And uh, let's hope he hasn't damaged that car. There's Dirk Shooter now, uh, who has going the wrong way down the field. He's got Rick Kurt behind him in seventh place, who's looking to relieve him of that position. So, Dirk Shooter in the number 57 yellow and orange car. And Rick Kuhn behind him in the red, white and blue car, challenging for position. It was a good qualifying from Dirk Shooter. He was very much in the wars in yesterday's race. And uh, wanted to make up for that, but uh, not really showing the kind of pace that he needs to challenge the front runners. There's a bit of a gap back from the runners to Sandy Younger in fourth place as well. But let's keep an eye on this battle here. Dirk Shooter and Rick Kuhn. And Rick Kuhn looking very close, tucked up behind the number 57 car. Round turn 12, they come and up in towards Sachs curve, which is that banked curve uh, that gives them the opportunity to propel towards 15, 16 and 17. And out of 17, onto the pit straight. Here they come, absolutely flat out. Uh, we can see a couple of cars noted for false starts. So that is Juan Vinez and also the 93 car of Jamie Font. Oh, Jamie Font has definitely been uh, attracting too much attention from the stewards nowadays, isn't he? So uh, he uh, was uh, noted. I don't think there's any action going to be taken as of yet. We continue to watch Ariel Levy in the 87 car with the rainbow markings represented by month in June. The 87 Ariel Levy car now attacking Paul Meyer ahead of him. Meyer in 10th place and Levi. Ariel Levy has made a great start from a long way back on the grid. He is moving forward. He has been very rapid. He looks to the inside of the 77 car under heavy braking at the hairpin. That looks like a textbook move from Ariel Levy. And onto the accelerator. He makes the move past.